Okay then, good morning, welcome back to Tiplo TV. In what is uh, a very wet four golf chest at the minute, it's absolutely non-stop rain in the UK and uh, not good for our golf courses, I'm afraid. But anyway, I'm in a dry and uh, hitting some golf balls this morning, Monday morning and as ever. Need a bit of a loosener, but I'll very shortly get it in three golf clubs this morning. In something a little bit different, um, looking at I've done a couple of videos this week, hopefully that you've watched already, um, reviews on the new hybrids, which was the Rogue hybrid and the uh, TaylorMade uh, 4M4. Did those reviews, very good performing clubs. And what I got to thinking, I'm a big fan of the sort of the long iron, the driving iron, you might call it. And at the moment, I've still got a, an X-Forge 21 degree driving iron from Callaway. Um, that's very much on loan at the moment from Callaway. And I've got my own Strixon ZU65, which is a three iron, lofted at 20 degrees. Again, very much a driving iron, a bit chunkier than the X-Forged. And then in my left hand here, I've got the TaylorMade M3 4 hybrid for, again, to get that 21 degree um, in terms of loft so that we can get a sort of fair comparison across the board. So what I'm looking at in the video is... You've got a couple of things. First of all, it's very much a personal preference, which club you feel more confident with. I think you've then got to look at where you want to use the club, what kind of gaps you're looking to fill. I'm interested in launch angle because I'm very interested to see, although they've all got the same loft, I'm very much interested to see what kind of ball flight differs. So I think there's a lot of things to take into consideration as to whether or not you'd prefer playing long irons or hybrids and again whether or not you like taking these perhaps even off the tee depending on the course you play maybe some tight par fours so there's lots of things which might persuade you to buy one club as opposed to the other but first of all let's see in terms of performance on dry ball data what each of these clubs does in terms of performance so we're looking at spin number carry distance and launch angle. I think they're the three things that I'm interested in. And perhaps ball speed as well. See what ball speed's coming off these things, which will ultimately uh, result in some extra yardage, no doubt. I'm expecting the M3 to be the more powerful of them all, but we'll wait and see. Anyway, enough talking. Intro's done. Move the camera, hit some golf balls, warm up first, then hit some golf balls, and then we'll have a look at some data. Okay, so we're going to start this, um, this whole thing off with the hybrid. See what numbers we can get out of this. Now, this isn't a review of the M3 Hybrid, so let's not get confused with what I'm doing here. But in terms of looks, pretty standard hybrid looking golf club, I suppose. And again, this is the first thing is when the ball is at a dress position, does this club, and I think it does, I think it's fair to say for most of us average golfers, does this inspire more confidence than the next clubs are going to come to, which is the driving irons. So that chunkier profile, in effect, a little a mini um, fairway would, I suppose you'd call it. I think does give you that extra little bit of confidence um, in that larger hitting area as we see it. Um, the next thing for me again is going to be about picking the ball off of a tight lie, and I think that we're going to we're going to play these from no tee, no tee, straight off the deck. And I think again when I've got this when I've got this sat behind a golf ball, I've got no problem in terms of confidence in terms of striking the ball. And that's the issue, which again, I'm gonna mention next time around when we put the uh, hybrid, uh, the long iron on the floor, maybe that'll be slightly different. But that's all we need to say. We just need to hit some golf balls. So let's see how this gets on in terms of performance.
Okay, so that's golf balls hit with the hybrid. Um, nothing to do with numbers yet. Let's go straight into talking about the profile of the longer irons, the driving irons, I suppose you'd call them. And I've chose these two because, again, they're very much different in terms of their overall profile yet again. And I think they're at different levels. Starting off with the X-Forge, it's very much a long iron, a continuation of almost a blade looking golf club. So it's a very small profile. And I think you've got to be a fairly confident ball striker to want to take this club on and put it in your bag. Sat behind the ball, it's a stunning looking golf club. And to be honest with you, I did the review of this and I played out uh, in a bit of sunshine not so long ago in this one, with this one. And it's a great performing club. It's got fantastic feel. And again, something that you're not going to mention when you talk about hybrids, you're not really going to talk about feel. Maybe there's a change in the acoustics and sound uh, on the latest range from TaylorMade. I think there is, and that's an improvement. But you're not going to beat the sound and feel for me out of this X-Forge. So that's one uh, tick that will certainly arrive in this box that it won't be in the hybrid. And then moving on, and I'm going to do these both, uh, I'll hit balls with both of these, but we'll talk about both products at the same time. The ZU65, more of the classic what you call driving iron, chunky top line. It's got a bit of meat packed in behind it, uh, thicker sole uh, on this club. And again, probably if you're looking at the two together in terms of calling them driving irons, the ZU65 presents you with a bit more confidence because like I said, just of its pure overall size. I've gained this club uh, for the majority of the last uh, sort of 12 months, 14 months. And again, it was a kind of very much a go-to club for me. I liked it off the tee. My issue would be with this club, again, what I said earlier about the hybrid, is when you sit it on the floor on a tight lie, I'm not too sure I've got the same confidence that I would have sitting a hybrid behind the ball. So they're the kind of things, again, they're, again, very much about the individual, what you like to see. But... I can't go on for too much longer. Let's hit some golf balls, both of these two now, and uh, then we'll sit down and we'll analyze the numbers and see if we can see the differences between these clubs, at least in performance, first of all, and then talk about which one perhaps you consider playing yourself. Right, that is it, golf balls hit with all three clubs. We'll get straight stuck into numbers, I think. And I'm gonna throw each of the three sets of averages on screen um, so we can have a good comparison straight away. And I think, first of all, let's start off with a hybrid. First club that I hit this morning. Um, let's have a look at those numbers. So 126 ball speed, which is very impressive indeed. 3.9 spin, which again, impressed with that, with the four hybrid. 190 carry, 15 degrees worth of launch, okay. Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum first of all and Strixon's Edu 65. Don't forget, slightly different in loft. This had 20 degrees of loft, so it was never gonna be at the same uh, launch, but it was considerably different if we start there. 12.8 in terms of launch angle, so a completely different ball flight. Not too dissimilar really uh, to the hybrid, but only 118 in terms of ball speeds. Spinning at 3.4, 174 carry straight away some glaring differences and they were probably the opposite ends of the spectrum between the two and the x-forge sat somewhere in the middle of both of those um 122 ball speed and 32 spin 181 carry launching again very low at 13.1 so how would you do an assessment of this well i think the, the obvious is a, the, 
the differences are very obvious and they're glaring and I think that first of all it's the launch angle which is the biggest difference you look at the hybrids you look at this ability to get weight and grab it and move it to the back and lower CG and it helps without doubt just shows again how much it helps in terms of launch angle and for us average golfers to get the ball up and out there and I think that's a massive massive thing um, in terms of why you might choose this club and we'll get to the sort of why you choose the club in a minute but you look at ball speeds massively different between this and the ZU65 eight mile an hour difference in ball speeds I can't believe the spin on the hybrid was so impressive as well to be honest with you at 3.9 more than happy with that on a four hybrid but again from 174 of the ZU65 carry to the hybrid at 190 that's a huge huge difference the only kind of difference is that you would choose one club over another I think is the conditions that you play in on a frequent basis I play on a Lynx style track and the fairways can be very firm in the summer so I've played the kind of driving irons off the tee and the low launch doesn't make a great deal of difference because that low penetrating ball flight if you do manage to hit fairways then they just run forever so it suits that style of golf course and it's not something that I have a problem with that said if I'm looking at a 190 yard par 3 I wouldn't be choosing to hit a driving iron into it because again with that low launch if I do manage to carry any front bunkers it's going to be fizzing off and through the back um, with that low ball flight whereas the hybrid 15 degrees worth of launch again descent angle will be coming down I mean peak height on the uh, although we don't throw this number, number out peak height was 88 feet on the hybrid 63 feet on the iron so the ball flight is massively different in terms of height descent angle will be different so you've got you then look at tight lie on the fairway which would you rather sit behind the ball hybrid or small profile of the driving iron and again I would definitely go to hybrid then I don't like playing the driving iron from a tight lie on the fairway then in the rough sitting in a bit of fluffy rough which would you prefer to take I think we could again go for hybrid so there's a lot more versatility and shot options that are in the hybrid as well so then you look at your bag and for me I'm going to be looking at doing a video where I bridge again from four iron through to three wood I think it's the versatility that it's nice to have the high for me the long iron in the bag like I said for that tee shot playing on a link style fairway but it's got a way up as for me this is I'm talking on a personal level now how many times I'm playing that shot to how much versatility uh, an extra hybrid might offer me in the bag so that's something that you'd have to consider and like I said it's all about personal choice I think the biggest thing out of this is confidence when that club head is sat behind the ball which gives excuse me the more confidence anyway I think the numbers are fairly obvious the assessment is fairly obvious but I want to say we're going to do a bit of a survey so vote now what would you uh, I think I've put it up in is it the left hand corner I'll put up the survey now what would you choose for uh, hybrid or for whatever you want to call it 21 degree uh, driving iron which would most of us average golfers choose be interesting to see the result of that vote but I think I know the answer anyway as ever thanks for watching hope you enjoyed that one it's the end to uh, like I said did a couple of hybrid reviews this week and started opening some questions in my head so I thought we'd cover it in a bit of a video so hope you enjoyed it thumbs up comments all them things and as ever just thanks for watching